All right, first things first. So we have a Nintendo Famicom um, that we are looking to modify. Got this off of the Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks with a few other things that I'm working on. Um, it didn't have any AV cables or anything um, plugged into it at the time. It had essentially, somebody had previously attempted to start the AV mod but were unsuccessful. Um, it was sold to me as not working. I was able to redo the mod and get it all working. Um, but with that, I only had the AV cables that you see here, which I had just coming out of the back like a long pigtail, um, which obviously does not look good. It's not easy for storing and it makes it hard to make this a display piece. So with that, um, I bought a TRRS cable and adapter, um, which we're hoping to wire up into the Famicom. Um, if my measurements are right, this should fit right into the hole that the RF modulator used to come out of. Um, and that'll allow us to just plug this in to get our audio and video out. Um, so with any luck, it should be pretty easy. Um, first things first that we need to do, it, we need to beep out the TRRS jack so that we know which pins on the end um, will be corresponding to what uh, jacks on the other end. So let's get that all set up here. I have to do the customary test. So we want to first Let's start off first by just finding the ground. Oh, that was easy. Nope. There we go. So ground is this one on the end here. So we're going to mark that one with our little Sharpie. We have G for ground. And then Really, we just need to find the video because the other two um, will be bridged together because the Famicom does not have um, stereo out, it just has mono out. So that means that this one will be our video signal, which means the other two will be um, jumpered together to be our uh, be our left and right um, for mono but it might as well get the pseudo two channels out of that so let's go ahead and crack open the Famicom and start getting that taken apart so that we can fix up this mod. The six Phillips screws on the back. Good news is, is that these are all the same length. They're all Phillips head. It is before Nintendo started switching everything over to tri wings and game bits and all that nonsense. So this will make that bit a lot easier. And let's move the top shell and the controllers out of the way. Set those aside. And we are left with this. Um, so this is the... It'll get the glare out of the way there. The... HVC CPU GPM-02. Um, there are a few different revisions of the Famicom board. Um, I didn't find a whole lot of documentation. I'll try to link in the description um, the documentation that I did find as far as um, how the different boards are modified and where I found the source for this one specifically. Um, I don't want to do too much to the existing wiring or modification, it all kind of works. Um, so we're more or less just going to leave it as is, even though it is kind of ugly with some 
bad solder joints and some hot glue and things, but we are going to be picking up essentially from here and we'll be rerunning the, the wires through, picking up our, um, our sound as well from here and running it through so that we can get that all taken care of. Um, so let's keep on trekking on. So, um, luckily all the cables here are already um, color coordinated, so we're just going to unsolder all of these joints here, um, and then we'll be working to solder all the joints to the TRRS jack. Good news is everything seems to reach over to this side just fine with plenty of room to spare, um, so we shouldn't have any problems in getting that all put through and taken care of. Um, so let's unravel some of these wires. It looks like the ground wires were just... Uh, wound up together. It doesn't look like they were actually soldered. Uh, and then let's just desolder the, the video there. So because all of these share a common ground, we can go ahead and see about putting those together and hopefully tinning those up so that they will be nice and simple to wire. Um, with that as well, the red and the white here um, are both the same, so we really don't need to have um, separate cables for those. Um, we just might though, um, just for the ease of use there. We'll want to start off, I guess, um, tinning the jack itself. It's going to be hard to see on camera, um, and I don't want to move the camera around, so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera here. Right, so that has been tinned up. So now we just need to follow our marks that we've made already. Um, and tin those or solder those to the tin pads. So we've got the video, which we are all set, and the ground, and then the other two don't really matter which order we do. Is connected through the ground appears to be grounding. Just to test that, we will plug our cable back in here. And then we can beep that out again one last time. So we should be all set on those. Now it's just a matter of putting everything in the case and hope that it buttons up real nice. So this will just lay over um, all of this and tuck through the back here. So let's start off with getting our top case back in frame. <laughs> And we'll just have to make sure when we close up the case that that lines up nicely, but it should. So if that's all lined up, we'll hold that down. I would just like to move the eject mechanism, make sure that's still going through. And then let's get some of those screws back in place. Double check before we get too far into it, because I hate to have to take it all apart again. So that will end up closing up real nicely um, with that TRS jack just hanging out. So let's get the rest of those screws put in and button this baby up. All right, everything is all buttoned up. Um, as you can see, that looks a lot cleaner. 
um, than it did with the big old pigtail sticking out the back beforehand. Um, and then let's just grab that that cable that we have to make sure it plugs in and out without any problems. Um, super clean look. I'm glad I didn't have to use any sort of um, hot glue or anything like that on this. Um, a lot of people when they do this mod they end up drilling in it and into the body of the Famicom itself and I really just don't like how that looks. Um, I had the luxury of the previous owner already removing the RF jack. Um, I'm not really certain how I would have done it um, if I didn't have the RF switch already removed here. Um, because if I could, I would have liked to preserve that. Um, I've seen a few mods where they hang um, this this exact jack essentially out one of the controller ports. I probably would have gone that route, to be honest. Um, it's a pretty clean look overall, um, and it still maintains the integrity of the original device. Um, so yeah, that is a pretty simple mod. Um, pretty easy to do as far as um, getting it put through. So, hope you enjoyed.